Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Wired Nerdy Podcast. This is season number two, episode number seven, if I'm counting correctly. My name is Keith. I am here with the glorious best friend of mine, Doug. Uh, you like that sound effect? I do. I'm getting a better welcome than I deserve. But that's well, we've okay. been uh, we've been playing with sound effects, by the way, guys. It's it's a lot of fun uh, tied to these uh, stream decks. We talked to him before. And uh, Doug found this <laughs> really cool, really cheap software on Steam. And you map these buttons and you just hit one button and you can play any sound effect you want. So we're going to not we're not going to try to go crazy with it, but it's just kind of fun. I don't know. We like goofing off. He's been doing it during our, our video games lately. Yeah, I'll try to do a couple through the show, but uh, I'll make sure they're appropriate. As don't want it to be like a, tell. a 90s shock jock, right? No. <laughs> How's the week treating you, man? Good. You know, the weather's really warm, uh, strangely, for this time of year, but I've been getting out in the yard, doing lots of work, unfortunately. So no, that's good. good. That's good for you. That's awesome. I no, need I more you. cold weather to get some game time. Yeah, well, it's, yeah, you never know. We get through March. We'll, we'll see. So, all righty. You ready to do the news? We are ready. Or I'm all ready. Right. Let's, ready? Cue, yeah. let's yeah. cue it up. Let's cue up the nerd news. Nerd news. And as usual i'm gonna go ahead and get the share stood up and i'm gonna let you take the very first one because it is in your particular wheelhouse my friend absolutely uh we've talked about fallout a lot as you can see if you're watching the video portion i have some uh, fallout uh, swag right behind me and uh again fallout and bethesda have come out with a uh love letter as you will say to the uh, fallout fans there it is a little mini nuke And it comes with some stats, Mm -hmm. and it also comes with the Fallout Anthology Collector's Edition. comes with all the games out so far, I believe. Exactly. I I believe this is in uh, preparation for their new Fallout TV show that's coming on Amazon. I'm super excited. The things I've seen, just the previews, and uh, not really a preview. They have a very short clip, but then the screenshots and the uh, photos from the set look amazing. The power armor looks amazing. The vault suits, uh, the um, characters, everything looks great so far. It really does. And what's really neat about this is that uh, it's 60 bucks. You get these cool stat cards inside of a, a little nuclear bomb, which is kind of funny that you can mail that in the U.S. Because <laughs> it does look yeah, like a bomb. Yeah, <laughs> Wait again. America. <laughs> exactly. Um, but, you know, you do. You get the... Definitive editions of Fallout 3, Fallout New Vegas, Fallout 4, Fallout 74, original Fallout, Fallout 2, Fallout Tactics. Uh, it's, it's a, wow. It's so cool. Each code for the game is printed on the back of one of the corresponding seven primary upgrade stats from the Fallout game series, just like you said. Yeah, and 60 bucks for all this uh, art piece, for the cards, mm-hmm. and for all the games is cheap. Mm-hmm. Now, if you go on Amazon or you go on Epic or whatever online game store you're using you'll find that with all the prices added up uh this is quite a good deal it really is it's a great deal and this is through steam if i'm those are steam codes for pc Mm -hmm. but i'm sure a lot of people are going to want the actual memorabilia to put on the shelf kind of like uh what you've done with your pip boy in the background there yeah definitely all right you're gonna get this I've, been, uh, I, I think I've almost got all of them uh, through already Epic Games or through Steam. This yep. would be redundant for you, unless you wanted the nuclear bomb. I do. I need to make some more room on my uh, shelf back here. You need a bigger shelf. Yep, <laughs> definitely. Just wait till you get that power armor. You know, uh, we'll talk about it here in a little bit. But Comic Con is coming next week. I we may have to add, make some additions to that. That's great point. Great point. We'll get to that in a moment. Yeah. Spoiler <laughs> alert. Uh, so this next one <clears throat> I was unaware of, but it is a Terminator open world survivor game. So it seems like it's MMO and it's, I don't quite fully understand like the timeline. I think it's a, a branch off timeline as uh, from one of the movies. So it's kind of out of their canon. Yeah. Uh, but, um, uh, it looks great. Do you know much about this? Did you hear about it or do you know? I did not kind of reading the article. It's set in 2009, which, uh, in story 
perspective is after the nuclear cataclysm, as they call it, uh, brought by Skynet. And it starts before the formation of John Connor's resistance against the rogue AIs. So that's kind of the timeline that this game is putting us in. So it's like the early days, sounds yep. like. Uh, but it's it's a very short cinematic. doesn't show gameplay. It looks like Day Z to me. If you've ever seen Day Z or any of those um, those massive multiplayer online games mm. that are survival, and this is supposed to be a survival game, but it shows a T one hundred stalking these two people that are going out on a supply run. It looks really good. Uh, I'm curious about it. It says um, Steam access starts October twenty fourth. That's soon. That's, that's right. fall, right? I mean, this this year's. I had nuclear. This wasn't even on my radar, so that's really neat. So. Read more into the article. It looks like it's going to have some base uh, management elements, uh, first-person shooter mechanics. Uh, you can either play in solo or co-op in groups of four. So this might be one for us to check out with our group. Mm-hmm. You know, I love Aliens. I love Terminator. I love Predator. Oh, yeah. I love all of those kind of motifs. So we'll talk a little bit about comics uh, as well. And I'm sure we'll mention Terminator because you know we're, we'll, we'll talk about that here in a moment. <laughs> no, but this is cool. I didn't even know this was coming out, so I'm excited about it. Very good. What's up next? Now, this is uh, your wheelhouse, uh, Apple Car. Yeah. Uh, well, I believe that's similar to CarPlay. It, well, no. It was oh, an rumored, actual car. Oh, an actual okay. car. It's been okay. rumored for years that Apple has been working on a competitive smart car slash electric car. Stuff leaked, I don't, if I remember correctly. I, I, I don't get it. If they did, I don't understand why. But they were working on one that has been confirmed. So those rumors, you know, were set. But this past week, they made basically they made the announcement. Even though they never declared formally that they were working on one per se, they made the announcement that they called it off. They're not going to pursue it anymore. What's interesting about this is after they did this, uh, a lot of companies were lobbying them. Um, for example, Liv- uh, Rivian. Hope I'm saying that right. They're electric car yep. company that make the suggestion. famous truck right now that works pretty good i think they do they do it's doing better than the tesla cyber truck and a lot of the I testing think, yep people it are looks way better for apple to buy rivian you know, why 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 have your own car company from ground up that you start when you can just buy one and make it better yeah. that yeah. was the, that was the concept behind it so well, i, I think an, yeah i think another issue would be that apple doesn't do anything Excuse my language, half-ass. I didn't know any way other to say it. But, you know, they make premium products. So they can't go into the electric vehicle field that is getting pretty saturated with these big companies, Tesla, Rivian. Uh, I mean, Toyota's got the half-hybrid with the Prius. But they can't go into this field, in my opinion, without doing something super premium. And I don't know that that's going to be at a price point that um, most people can afford. And the article points out that in 2017, Apple CEO Tim Cook pointed out this was a driverless car, autonomous. Oh, yeah. And it says that uh, on his statement in 2017, we're focusing on autonomous systems, and clearly one purpose of an autonomous system are self-driving cars. Now, if they were specifically focusing on it being a self-driving car, as we know from Tesla, there that hasn't been overly uh, successful yet. There's been a few mm-hmm. pedestrians hit, but I mean, you know, Honestly, it's going to happen. It's kind of you know expected. So yeah. I see kind of why they backed off a little bit. Um, they and they also have their own AI that since Chat GPT blew up, they're developing their own AI, and that's going to launch this year. I'm pretty sure that's what they really want to focus on. Hmm. Yeah, as opposed to a car project, putting money into it. So it mentions here the implications that an Apple car wouldn't matter in the grand scheme of things, but just that the company was better off focusing more on buzzwords, the projects more in its wheelhouse like ai so there it is that's probably supporting it but anyway yeah i uh, skipped uh macroeconomics in college but i'm sure <laughs> that uh you, you know you that. have such uh, a fund for research projects and new adventures they want to like you said put all that cash into something that uh, it's going to give them a good return on their money Exactly. And it doesn't make sense to me for Apple to get into autonomous vehicles. It never really fully did. They're a software company, yeah. but they're also a hardware company. And it just, it didn't jive with me. So, And I'd be worried if I stepped in there with an Android, some eject seat, <laughs> ejection seat would shoot me out of there. <laughs> shoot you out. That would oh, be awesome. Android detected. Detected. <laughs> we are not. T- <laughs> no, every time you plug in your direction because it's a self-driving car, it takes you to an Apple store. <laughs> 
<laughs> That'd be amazing. So when I sit in there, it starts playing the song. <laughs> I'm in danger. <laughs> I so. love it. I love it. Look at that. All right. Oh, getting, we're getting better with these we're sounds all the time. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's keep it rolling. This is very interesting. We've been playing the heck out of this game. I'll I'll let you take this one. The last one's kind of in my wheelhouse. Yeah, I think we've talked about it before. Hell Divers 2. Uh, we have been playing that a lot. I'm really enjoying it. Uh, it's very fast paced. It uh, scares me sometimes how we get swarmed. But uh, of course, you know, all good things. Uh, someone has to ruin it for everybody, you know, hopefully not everybody. But on the Steam store, someone has been able to make a, I believe, a new game with the same name, Helldivers 2. And they're kind of ripping people off uh, as a scam with their money there. Fake Steam they're, page. Yep. yep. They're trying to advertise uh, Helldivers 2 as a discount and then uh, marketing give, off the profits of those that fall for yep. it. They don't give them a game, essentially. Yep. As I remember it. But it got taken down very quickly. Mad credit to Steam for getting on top of this very fast and finding that so fast yes oh, yeah because this game is is wildly popular it wasn't it, it's had tons of server issues just because it was never it's a sleeper hit just call it what it is and it the servers have been slammed so it's very very popular and these scammers nowadays they're just like well how in the world are we going to capitalize on this so they came up with this yeah. scheme and uh, they made some money off of it i'm sure but i'm glad that steam took it down but you got to be careful out there. Absolutely. And I was uh, curious. I just looked it up. Steam, as of uh, January of this year, hosts more than 73,000 games in their library. Did you ever so, see... Do me a favor. Pull up the stat for Helldivers 2. While he does that, I'll explain why. Just to articulate to you that this game is blown up and they didn't expect it. The numbers are insane. It's essentially Starship Starship Troopers, if you've ever saw that movie from like late oh, 90s. Yeah. But also, it also has a Skynet element because you can fight bugs that are like Starship Troopers, but then you have like Terminators as well that are like Skynet. And you do it with four other people in this co-op. And it is it's a hard game. You got to work together. Friendly fire is always on. So mm -hmm. you kill your friends a lot. But it is a blast. But it has blown up. Did you find the number on what? I did. What are they at so right now? Because I saw uh, this number and it blew me away. The players right now, and it says it was just like 10 minutes ago, is 429,276 on Steam alone. And last week, that number Their all-time high, 458,709. Steam only. That doesn't include console players. Yeah, oh, they, I, they, That's amazing. The article I read, they had anticipated that they had breached like 660,000 concurrent users at one point and it yeah. surpassed uh, broke so many records for massive i think it was gta grand theft auto online that had the record for largest and it surpassed I can look that. that up yeah so it, it, it surpassed it but that just tells you half over half a million people are playing this game right now I, and yes. I bet you could say that even though 10 minutes ago it was 400,000, I bet it's higher than that because it does not include console players. Now it has, now this is Steam only, but uh, Grand Theft Auto V only got to 364,000 nine years ago. There you go. So, they so I mean, it's they just wait. whooping everybody. They've blown it out of the water. And yep. so and it's a smaller studio that created it. Which is it. great for them. I mean, they, yeah. I think they threw this out there thinking, uh, eh, we'll make a little money. And then it exploded. And most people didn't play Helldivers 1. I had never yeah. played it. So. I had never even heard of it before you told me about yeah, it. Yeah. It's which that doesn't mean a lot, but no, it's a good game though. You, even with its yeah. bugs, it's, it's good. We're having a lot of fun with it. Absolutely. So point of it though, there are scams everywhere. So be very, just got to be careful out there. Very, very careful. All right. Ooh, this one's a fun one. Let's, yeah. Let's I threw this in here. Uh, every time we get to look at some new tech and some mm -hmm. new stuff is a great day, I think. Yep. And this is the Mobile World Congress, which takes place yearly. Think of it like the Consumer Electronic Expo, CES, except it's only focused on mobile devices. Mm -hmm. And 5G made like its initial announcement out there. You know, anytime there's something new, of course, Apple has their own and Google have their own conferences, yeah. but this is for 
you know, the, the others, the other groups out there. And there's always some really, really cool things, especially the prototyping. What, oh, what, definitely. Of these, which ones caught your eye? If I'm well, if right, you scroll down there, I believe Zyane. the very first one caught my eye is a rollable. And I, it doesn't roll up tight. Like, you know, mm-hmm. if you roll That's stuff awesome. and you can get it real small. This has a certain bend factor to it. But it's amazing that we have a rollable phone that the... Uh, you wear this magnet device on your wrist, and it'll magnetize to your wrist, and you can wear it around like a like a pit boy, like right here. Do you remember? So slap? I, I've got the idea of getting a pit boy. Do you remember slap bracelets? I do, that's and what that's it what I mean. Me it's not going to get tighter. I no. think there's a certain level that it stops at. But it reminds me of those like slap bracelets. Bendable screens are getting crazy. Fun fact: I have a bendable screen. I'm sitting at staring in front of me, and I cringe. My brother <laughs> had come over uh, so many weeks back and I was showing him my screen because it can be flat when I'm doing productivity things like spreadsheets when I game, I can grab the corners and I can I can bend it. It's it's, it's almost 50, 50 inches. And even when he was here, I was pulling it and he, he's looking at me side eye me. I'm like, I know I uh, I always hesitate when I pull on it because <laughs> but it is it's just like it's the same technology. It's, it would scare me. It does. It makes me a little nervous because he's like in your head this isn't supposed to be bending this way. And I think it's going to be the same for phones. So, uh, any other devices that, that stood out for you? Yeah. Kind of going down the list, the nothing phone, they've been doing some interesting stuff with lighting on the back. It's Mm -hmm. a more of a simple phone, but I think that's their go-to is kind of these transparent cases, lots of lighting on the back. Yeah. Now I remember way back in the day, one of my first Android phones, you could set different uh, led colors to, people and friends so like a green light was you know your mother or a red light was your girlfriend oh no or but uh, i believe this is the same way you can set the uh, led patterns on the back to do all kinds of funky things i think it's hilarious that you just said the girlfriend would be the red light which is traditionally <laughs> tradition- i don't think so we're good. <laughs> tied to prostitutes <laughs> oh red light district i didn't even think of that My <laughs> oh Oh. I should have a sound for that somewhere, but I'll oh just leave gosh. that. Oh my gosh, that was hilarious. <laughs> we'll edit that out. <laughs> no, we won't. That's totally staying in. I'll make sure Ashley oh. listens. Going down the list again. We <laughs> Keep see going. This. I'm skipping <laughs> the humane AI pen. We talked a lot about this. We the have. more I see this thing, it is getting so interesting. I really like the concept that I saw for disabilities and stuff. Because yeah. you can ask it, what do you see right now? And... Uh, the demonstration I saw, uh, a convention hall with people walking around, different booths and electronics displays. I mean, the uh, if you're uh, legally blind or something like that, I think it'll be a huge help. And it has a mini projector on it. And I've seen people put their hand out and it projects the text on their hand because so mm-hmm. there's no screen, yeah. which is a cool concept. The one I'm excited about is the, we covered it in a prior episode, is the Rabbit R1. It's not a pen. It's a little orange device but it actually has a screen very similar mm-hmm. though you can has a camera on it, you can point it at something and say what is this or you know where am i going and it has chat gpt integrated into it it's very similar to this just a different form factor now that rabbit r1 i believe if i read right it completely sold out of its first stock it did they were doing it in waves i think may was when it first started oh, the first wave april may wave and then i think june wave two that's when it's shipping it was 200 mm-hmm. bucks and no plan that is cheap. I know. Cheap, I, cheap. A few times I've been like, oh, man, I really should get one to play with. I don't know what i do with it. but And then see. down here, I have to ask why, because we had Google Lens. Yeah. And I don't know if you ever got to mess with those. I, did. I never did. They were, eh. I, I have an issue with these. Oh, but look, so I don't know. If, I don't know if I want to go as long as to call it a disability. It's not quite like your hearing disability. But for me, I have a weird thing about glasses, VR. I have, I was born with a cataract in my right eye. Hmm. So technically I'm pretty blind in my right eye. So anytime you isolate my eyes, uh, even on VR, unless I'm wearing my glasses or contacts, and even that is kind of weird because they're isolated. My left eye can't take over as well. It messes with my brain. So the problem that I had with the Google glasses was they clicked on the glasses and I had a screen that sat in front of your eyeball. And usually you had to pick which eyeball. Well, my problem is you put it on my good side. Well, now I've got to walk around and with my bad side (laughs) looking around. But if you put it on my bad side, then I can't see the screen. So Mm -hmm. eh. what I will say about these, these are called air glasses. They're 
Ray-Ban Meta Smart Glasses. Oh, these are tied into the, to, to Meta. They say that they're very lightweight. They look like just normal real glasses. And I think it's just part of uh, augmented reality. And I, I have heard that what's fascinating about these is just how thin they are and lightweight. They, they're like regular glasses, and which is kind of cool. Yeah, the weird thing, though, at the bottom, it says uh, they won't be available outside of China. But it's probably just a prototype. I'm it sure is. they're still working out some bugs and yes. testing some stuff. I think you're spot on on that. That's exactly. But I've heard about these. Yeah, the and not to get political. Called. China probably doesn't want AI glasses in their country anyway for secrets. And... Or they do so that when you're walking in the street, imagine oh, being a, like yeah. a police officer over there. Everybody you walk by, you can see if they have a warrant. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> so, you're hey, getting hey, cyberpunk esque right. uh, now. Um, well, but they already have facial recognition there that you know does that so mm-hmm. uh, we'll keep on clicking here uh they talked about the gemini photo generator which we talked about already which is google yep, it's AI. having some issues with the uh, history and yep. uh, not really racism but we want to be historically accurate when generating our photos i believe so yep the one plus watch two is now i watched some reviews on that it uh looks big it's doing really well it's yeah. got uh Wear uh, OS 4.0, I believe. So it's funny. You own, do you own a Google Watch, yeah. right? So I can kind of show it on the camera. I I've got a Google Pixel Watch 2. Do you think I that really is, like it a lot. Is this, is this company going after that market, trying to do better? I believe than they are. Yeah. So Samsung the, has one as well, though. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Google is doing great with their uh, partnership or their ownership, I think, of uh, Fitbit. Mm-hmm. So I've got all the Fitbit stuff on my watch. Fitbit but the thing stuff. is, we they don't offer any other sizes. So this is a 40 millimeter. I've got a really big wrist with a tiny, tiny watch. Yeah. So I'd love to have a 45 or even a 47 millimeter watch. That makes sense. That makes sense. Wow, there's a lot of wearables. Wear OS, improved battery life they talk about. Fast Connect, seamless dock. They're and then Xiaomi is yeah. making a car, if we keep us going yeah, down there. Keep on scrolling. Not to interrupt you. No, please do. Uh, Xiaomi, I believe, was making some cell phones and other smart products. Now they are attempting to make an electric vehicle. All these cell phone companies trying to make vehicles. What's up with that? It's so weird. It does uh, 0 to 100 kilometers an hour in 2.78 seconds. That's really fast. Very fast. Wow, it looks kind of cool. Yeah. Gemini. I'm just going. This this is a long. I looked at the scroll. Wow, they made yeah. a lot of announcements. Mm-hmm. Samsung has big ambitions. This is the Galaxy Ring that Doug had talked about, which is it's like a wearable. And I don't know how I feel about that. Still, they must see something we don't, because also this week it was leaked that Apple is working on a ring. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think this is going to be the next thing. Like this health for health tracking these rings. Now, I did read an article about how fascinating it would be for hospitals if you could slip a ring on a patient. And then be able to, okay, like pull socks, yeah, and, without having yeah. all the machinery, things that like that. That would be great, as long as it could be hacked and you know, that sort of thing. Uh, Lenovo, uh, Lenovo has it. a yeah. uh, plan with iFixit to make their ThinkPads uh, easier to repair. Now you That's talked good. about another company doing that, pairing with iFixit to fix their phones. There's a lot of them. It's not. It's it's like too many. It's not just. And one. you have an iFixit kit that you I helped do. upgrade my laptop it. with. Oh yeah, I love. It I was fix amazing. It. And iFixit, they not only can you order parts from them, but they give you schematics. They give you how-to mm-hmm. videos, how to take things apart, and they have these kits that are amazing. Uh, just. It's a great company, but a lot of companies are partnering with them because there's this right to fix momentum that's taking place, especially in California, where uh, even Apple has started to embrace it, where they're saying, okay, well, yeah. everybody should have a right to fix their stuff. Well, and I believe we read a or talked about an article a couple episodes ago that batteries are probably coming back, uh, swappable batteries and cell phones. Oh, yeah. I like that idea, but I also don't like that idea just for the fact that, um, you know, your internals. So they're going to have to move some of the chipsets around, move some of the heat dissipation around to get that removable battery in and out of there. And then I worry about the IP rating, you know, the IP67 or 68 dust proof, waterproof, splash proof, all that good stuff. Because there will be seals that are gaps potentially where water and dust could get in. That's a good point. We'll see what what happens with that. This one I want your opinion on because everybody's freaking out about it. I don't think it's that big of a deal. Yeah. (laughs) I, I don't, uh like it at the moment i've seen some where the image is on the backside. so let's explain what it about is for privacy 
Oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> I keep thinking everybody watches video. So we are yeah. looking at uh, Lenovo. It's making a transparent laptop. Um, the image we're looking at, it has a glass screen. I believe there's a snap-in keyboard that goes in there. And then uh, the main monitor that you look at is all see-through, and it's got the picture of a web page on there. I think people so, are crazy about it because it does look like something on like Avatar, mm-hmm. sci-fi movies. It even mentions that in the article. I, to me, I think it would be distracting if I see some. Can you imagine you're typing or, and then your cat walks behind the screen? I don't know. I just think it would be distracting. Or in an cat, office. Yeah. I mean, it's cool that they can do it. And I've seen in CES many, many years ago that they've been able to do projection inside a glass for like store displays. And it's really cool. They've been able to do this for a long time. But yeah. the fact that they're doing it on so I get it. I don't think it's very practical, in my opinion. Now, some people have equated it to well, you could have a phone that's one piece of glass that's see through, and you know, touch buttons and that sort of thing. Yeah. So maybe that's maybe it's because of the it has potential in the future. I don't know. I, I think it would be distracting to use. Yeah, I kind of worry about it. To go back to my original comment, now that I've explained it, my yes, apologies. There you, sorry, yes. it's uh, it. The transparency works both ways, so there's no level of uh, privacy, and that's uh, what I would truly worry about. I'm sure this is a concept model, and they'll fix it in the future, but then that kind of takes away from the transparency if they block the back. Unless they have a way. So it's kind of... Unless there's a button you can hit that makes it non-transparent. Well, you look at uh, action movies, those secret Mm -hmm. rooms, and they frost the glass. Have you ever seen those in real life? Oh, no, I have not. They are so cool. They apply electromagnetic charge inside of them. Mm-hmm. And once they do, they just, they frost immediately. And then it when looks you hit amazing. a button, they, they release the charge and they're crystal clear. They are so cool. They put them in a lot of office buildings. I've gotten to see that them in a few places I've been. Crazy. Wow. It's so, so neat. Really like it. Sorry. See, there I go you. thinking that's a TV thing. That's awesome. I know. I, no, no, it's real life. We nice. talked about the wearable phone. Mm-hmm. Boy, there was a lot of announcements inside of here. Massive batteries, phone in. I'm sorry, I'm just blowing through these because there's oh no, so you're many. good. But not a lot of other things on the list caught my eye. That was yeah. kind of the main. Those are the main topics things. at the top. It's funny the Xiaomi Pad. It looks like the new. It looks like an iPad, but even the Magic Keyboard to it. So now we talk about tablets and stuff. I didn't really see one come out this year, but again. Apple has a very premium 8-inch tablet, and Android does not. Your premium tablets start at the 10, 12, 14-inch, and it goes all the way up. So yeah. I'd love to see that in the future, a smaller premium tablet. Yeah, and so, I yeah. think they will. I mean, you have the uh, uh, iPad mini, if I remember correctly. Yeah, and, so it, and that's what I'm referring yeah. to. I'd love to have an iPad mini, but I don't have an iPhone and the whole ecosystem. It's the ecosystem thing. I get it. I get it. Yeah. All right, so that is it for the nerd news. Let's jump into our main topic here for the second half of the show. Next week, we have a very big week, and we've been looking forward to it. We are going to go, just like last year, we're going to go to Comic-Con. Now, I want to point out, this is Doug's second Comic-Con, right? I'm still a newbie. So he he was a bit overwhelmed the first time we went, and there's a lot to look at, a lot of people, a lot of cosplay. We'll talk here in a little bit about the actual comic con that's upcoming but in that theme we wanted to talk about comic books now i and i'll just tell the very very brief way that i got into comics Uh, i was a big comic book fan and reader as a kid Uh, and most through life even now i'll go back to some of them the reason why was when i was in elementary school i did not like to read at all and i had a really good librarian a shout out to miss bartley she had this book of Hercules, and it was a comic. Now, it was very cartoon style, but she, she said, well, everybody would love to read if you can just find what you like reading. You know, what's your thing? And I was like, I don't have a thing. I don't like reading. Reading's dumb. And so she showed me this, and it was so cool. I remember the, the artwork was uh, Hercules had cut off the head of a hydra. And as a, as a little kid, I was like, whoa, that's so cool. Number one, can't believe okay. it's in the school library. Number two, this is reading? And she's like, yeah, it counts. And it was shortly after that that I then got into comics. And I was always a DC kind of guy. I I collected both. I had Marvel. But Marvel was always rooted in a realism. And I appreciated it. I I was a huge Punisher fan, Wolverine fan, some X-Men. But the stories I gravitated towards were always DC. Because DC was always more fantastical, more over the top, more gods and 
mythical things like that. And also, I was a huge Superman fan even before I read comic books. So I just gravitated toward him. That is my history. And I, I still have my collection. I have the entire collection from the 90s uh, set of Superman's death. I have all of them. And I even have all the variant covers. And they're sealed away. I, I always say, every time we go to Comic-Con, you and I walk past those booths where you can grade them. Mm. But it costs money. It's like, I think it can be like $20 a pop to get it graded. And they seal it hermetically and give it a number at the top. I know mine would be it's really, they'd fetch a great, you know, but I, yeah. I have so many of them. I would spend tons of money getting them graded. And I'm just like, eh. but every time you and I walk past, I'm like, someday I should bring at least my top ones and get them graded here. But absolutely. So that's yeah. my history. I'm a huge comic book reader. Lean towards easy. What is your history with comic books? Uh, not much, honestly. I mean, I remember reading um, Fantastic Four and then Spawn. And then later on, I got into Walking Dead. Uh, you know, started watching the series and then what, I looked at the comics, which I really liked. The thing that draws me to comics big time is the artistry and just the pop out words, you know, um, stuff that draws your attention. I'm not using all the right words, but that's what uh, draws me to comics is just the amazing artwork, uh, kind of the action and then. You know, the fight words like, uh, uh, like they get punched and ooh and stuff. So. It's visual. I couldn't agree with you more. The artwork on these things, it's amazing that people can draw these things. Oh, absolutely. And I'm and sharing about- on the screen, by the way, just some samples of, you mentioned Spawn. I never read Spawn. I did see the movie and I really enjoyed it. I've heard good things about it. It's a cool story. I, mm-hmm. I probably should go back and read these because... Man, they look really good. And now that they have this one here as a com- uh, compendium, they have graphic novels where if you don't want to collect every individual, you can go to Barnes and Noble or even uh, mm-hmm. Amazon. You can get a whole thick volume of all of them together. Is that how you read them or were you buying them individually when you were younger? I was buying them individually. And I mean, uh, you talk about rare, rare comics being lots and lots of money. You know, I was getting like five, ten dollar comics. Um, stuff that interested me. I wasn't really following the series. Not as diehard as you, but uh, I just, oh, this is a good story. Or, oh, I like this guy. I kind of pick one up every once in a while. Uh, shout out to like uh, Slackers in Columbia mm-hmm. and places like that that had the comic books. Have you been to comic book stores, like an actual dedicated comic book store outside I have of? not. Oh. I just I would got, love to. I, you I, know, just got, I get the feel from Big dude, Bang Theory, and uh, it just nope. looks really good. This is what we're doing, Doug. One okay. of our episodes, you and I, there's there's two comic book shops that are local. One in the capital, which is Jefferson City. That's okay. really – and it's really cool. It's like all all wooden um, drawers, and it's all wooden. It's so cool. And then another right. one, it's really good. It's also – they're all very tiny hole in the wall. Another one called Rock Bottom Comics in Columbia. I think we're going to do an episode where we take a field trip together and I'm going to, I'm going to take you to an actual comic yeah, shop. Absolutely. All right. We're doing it. <clears throat> See, you just gave me a great idea. I love it. <laughs> See, I'm doing good. Oh, uh, you mentioned walking dead. I yeah, started no, I with start- the show too. And, yeah. um, my wife at the time we were dating, she, as a gift got me, she knew I loved the show. She knew I was in the comics. And I never read the comics. And she got me, and I still have the date, the massive volumes. I have almost every volume of Walking And I started reading them. They are so good. And yes. they're better than the show in, in a lot of ways. Now, season yeah. one stuck tight to the comic, like pretty tight. Season two, they went off on their own way. Yeah. So. And, and that's what I read them for. I don't own any of them, but I uh, read them, uh, whether some friends had them or not. But that's what I wanted is I loved the show so much, but then I wanted the die hard actual story of what was happening. I wanted kind of the bits and pieces that they didn't have time for in the commercial breaks. And to be fair, the show did a excellent job. Oh, it was job. Still great. Yeah. The show is amazing. Like it, and it, it's a very well done uh, crossover, but uh, the they, comics are so good too. I mean, the artwork, it's just unbelievable. And for those who don't know, it just started again with the ones who live. Yep. And there, I think it's, a, it's is about that a, Michonne and Rick. Rick. Yeah. It's a spinoff. It's a yep. spinoff. Just and uh, of course, series. I don't have it. It's another streaming service that I got to pay a monthly fee. We'll talk yeah. about that later. But yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm, gl- I'm glad you brought it up because it's, it's just such a 
Yeah. Such an excellent, excellent series. Highly recommend picking them up. So I love comic books, but I just don't have as an extensive history. And yeah. I'm looking at your list. I'm really excited for you to walk me through all the things that you enjoy. I will. I had to pull back a little bit. I wanted to pick my personal favorite, and I know I'm going to miss some, but it's more my leans because some of these I've even I've, I've reread recently. So my thing is, <clears throat> I was an advent like uh, an avid collector for many, many years, actual physical books. I still have them. Like I said, have my complete Superman death of Superman series from the nineties, all of that. Um, but I don't have the space for it. You know me when we go to comic con, like they have so much cool stuff, but I don't, Oh, so much. I don't have a lot of like space to display things. I'm just not a, I'm not a collector of things and, uh, I'm more digital. However, I say that like same with my video games. I'm not even, you know, as you know, my brother, he's really into physical media. Uh, which is awesome because I think that's a good thing for preservation. And I don't agree with what streaming services do with being able to rip, rip things off. Yeah. But I'm also about, I'm more about efficiency in that I love digital and I love having it. But of course there's risk in that it can be taken away from you, uh, except for steam seems to do pretty good with their PC games. But yeah. I realized, Oh, I can read these electronically. And on my iPad, they look amazing. The color pops. And I got one of those cool screen covers, that paper like is what it's called. So when you're turning the page, it actually feels on your finger like paper. It's meant oh, to be nice. when you when you yeah. write, it's supposed to feel like paper. But also when you touch it, it's it's a matte finish and it's rough. So I started going back and reading some of these again. Very nice. And that's where these came from. And I'm not gonna belabor it. Uh, and I won't there will be no spoilers on any of this. Uh Many of them you can get into because they've already made them into shows. The Watchmen, such a great, great book series. Originally 1980s, they made a movie. There is an HBO series. I haven't watched the HBO series yet. Did you ever see The Watchmen or do you have any familiarity with these? I watched the movie and not knowing any of the story, it came off as very strange. But I, It is. It's supposed to be strange. Yeah. No, it's supposed to be Uh, weird. It was uh, super weird. It's supposed to be. That's like, that's its whole purpose. Oh, okay. Uh, it's, well, then it, it uh, hit right on the money. So what DC was doing with this was, this was the counter superhero story. Gotcha. And okay. the idea behind it is that typically in DC, they're all very noble, godlike, you know, things. Where these superheroes are very, very flawed. <laughs> they all have kind of some kind of... Uh, psychotic <laughs> yes. element to them so it was a it was a fascinating story but the the artwork and the, the story channel this was done in the 80s so during the cold war so it also has a lot of symbolism mm-hmm. about you know whether how to how to deal with the threat of nuclear when, when one of these potential superheroes could stop it and that sort of thing at least that's that's kind of the the motif of it but it's meant to be weird but it's a classic you gotta watch it if you don't like it go check out the movie um Batman. Now, you know I'm a Superman guy, but I love me some Batman. Oh, yeah. Definitive Batman. And it's so hard for me not to tell you the ending of this because it is brutal. Frank Miller. Now, Frank Miller is a writer. We'll Mm -hmm. talk about him again in a moment. And he's very, you know, prolific with what he comes out. He's he's really, really good at his stuff. Uh, He did Batman. They, They gave him complete control over it and let him do what he wanted. And he did a retelling and he decided to start with Batman as an old man. He's getting older, his back's hurting. And it's so cool because even when he's fighting thugs, you were talking about how, you know, the pow and all that, the cracking, you hear the crack of his knees and, and like his inner monologue in the panels is a, from the perspective of an older man who's in pain doing the, after doing it year. The perspective is so good. And it's about uh, him and of course the Joker and what he does with the Joker. It's just, it's so brutal and it's very, very adult. And it's so good. It's so good. Batman in a way. It's definitely not the Adam West Batman. You know, oh, definitely 1960s. not. Have you I heard do of this uh, dig the music of uh, the 60s. No, 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 I know. Um, I've seen a couple of these. I haven't read them completely through. Uh, Frank Miller does tons of great stuff, and I see some more on the list. Mm-hmm. But uh, one of the things to kind of segue you into is Sin City mm-hmm. and the movie. Have you I seen really it? enjoyed it. Yeah. The movie is a, is so close to the comics. I love the black and white art style of it. It's yep. amazing. That's what's neat. The comics are black and white only. And they did the same thing with the movie. And with all these, that's that's kind of my disclaimer. If you're not into comic books, that's fine. Go check out these because they did they did justice to them. They did a very good job. But SimCity is yes. a great read. Uh, it's a, but the, the movie, I've got to be honest with you, the movie 
it tracked pretty well with the comic books. Almost page. I think that first movie, each page turn, you could. There was videos I seen online where people would turn the page and it would match the scene to the movie. That's oh, how close nice. they kept it. Well, and the uh, list of actors they got: oh. Mickey Rourke, Bruce Elijah Willis, Wood. Jessica Alba. Oh yeah. Um, Great. It keeps going on. Benicio yeah. Del Toro. Yeah. If Frank Miller, again, very adult. He did the Batman. And he did Sin City as well. Highly recommend. Mm-hmm. So this next one, I just, I'm almost finished with it. I started it last year. I've always wanted to read it. So one of my favorite novelists is Neil Gaiman. And he had done in the late 80s, early 90s, a series for DC called Sandman. Now, Sandman, it's, of course, the person that makes you sleep. It's the god of uh, dreams. He, he, they basically said, hey, we want, you know, what do you want to write? And he said, I want to pick one of your obscure characters. And DC had not done anything with Sandman for years, since like the 60s. So he did a total retelling of it, and it blew up. And I got all of these on digital, and I've been reading them uh, all last year. There's so many. There's like 70 total 70 volumes so it went it was a long run yes that's why it's taking me over a year to read these and i and i gotta tell you they're so good now there's a series on netflix i have yet to watch and they say it's supposed to be very very good and it tracks with these come these they're also very adult um but man these are such a good read they're very very good yeah i'm glad you uh said neil gaming i have uh, listened to a couple of his books on audio yes and he does the audio for it he does the voiceovers amazing british Uh, guy some yeah perfect uh ocean at the end of the lane was really good and then norse mythology i love those books that's great you should read uh the bone yard or it's just called the bone graveyard okay i'll add that uh, to my list it's really good and it's uh it's it's a story that is intended for i'm not gonna say younger audiences but um he wanted to tell a story about a little boy oh and okay. and a graveyard i'll just leave it at that and it is so so good he's such a great writer but his comic book series is just the sandman series i can't i can't recommend it enough and the show i haven't watched so i don't know if i can recommend it but i've only heard good things about the show as well and they yeah. say that the show tracks with the comics pretty close but i knew that and i didn't want to start watching the show and then ruin the comics i was enjoying them so much so. All right, the next one is um, something that I really, really love. And I have, I had to stop collecting them because it was getting expensive. These were probably the last run of comics that I collected physically. And it is the joint Batman Superman series. What they did was they're best friends, which they are, uh, and they essentially did a whole run and the best part about this is what they 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 do in these stories um, and how they complement each other in one of the very first books and i'm not going to ruin anything because it's how the book starts it's not the main story just to give you an idea the book starts with both batman and superman were fighting this robotic character i can't remember his exact name roboto something generic and the it opens with they're both buried alive in a grave superman and batman together they're they're buried superman had been shot with kryptonite bullets and batman had obviously gotten beat down pretty good and they both are were buried alive so clark is dying he's losing his best friend what does batman do he basically says, I'm sorry, Clark, this is the only way. And he takes off his belt all of his explosives, puts it on Batman's back, or sorry, puts it on a Superman's back. He uses Superman as his shield to blow out of the grave. Oh my God. And then he kicks this, this guy's tail. That's what I mean. And there's things like where Superman will throw Batman. Like the way they compliment, and there's always, Batman's always cranky. And brooding and mad, it's Superman is cracking jokes left and right. Oh, yeah. And every now and then, Batman will crack jokes. The, I would laugh out loud on the writing of these and the way that they picked on each other. It was just so good. So yeah. good. I can't recommend Definitely. these enough. Keep on clicking here. Yeah, so have you ever heard of these? I have. Um, I have not got a chance to read those. Um, now I did a little research. Hopefully, I believe your first uh, person is Ultra Humanite. That's it. Is that the? It's a weird uh, name. Nineteen thirty nine Action Comics number thirteen. Yeah, yeah, that's okay. it. Yeah, these are so good. And I was collecting these physically, but 
they just kept releasing them so fast. And I was like, okay, I'm going to go broke. I yeah. think this was the last series uh, that I had actually physically. And I have tons of these. And I have them concurrently, like one, two, three, four, five, six. Like I was collecting them actively, but there were so many of them. I was like, okay, I, I'm going to go broke here. So I backed off. So I'd lost track. I never finished the series, but someday maybe I'll go back and, and finish the collection. But th- that's about the only thing I'd collect, but I'm probably going to need more space. So right I have now. two more here. And I think they're obscure. They made this into a show. I heard the show was not very good, but this comic I cannot emphasize enough is so good. It's called Why the Last Man. The reason why it's called Y is because of the Y chromosome. It opens up and essentially this dude who is a magician has a pet monkey and he's just living his life. He has a girlfriend. She's off traveling, though, for a trip. I think it's for work. And some weird, mysterious disease all of a sudden comes over the entire human race, and all the men all the men die. They start bleeding from their eyes. And by the way, I'm not ruining anything for you. This is the very beginning. It sets it up. They start mm-hmm. bleeding from their eyes and their ears, and they die. Every man in the world, boy, it is sad to babies, to baby boys, every male. Oh, and if you had yeah, the Y chromosome, you're, it, it, it only attacked that. On top of that, the I think women, obviously, if they were pregnant, only the girls would survive, the babies. Well, this one guy with his pet monkey is the only one that survives. And what's brutal about it is that he is viewed as an enemy. There's some women that want to kill him. Some want to rape him because they want to try to have kids. Yeah. It's just, it's so uh, brutal. And and great at the same time. The story is amazing. I cannot recommend this comic book enough. Have you even heard of this one? I have not. I looked up the show, uh, 2021. It's mm-hmm. only a 10 episode run. No uh, well. seasons other than that. Yep. Yeah. It did not do well. But I can vouch for the story is so, so good. It sounds very interesting. And he has to, it's a big epic adventure. He has to get across country to get to a facility to get studied to figure out what is it about him and why is he the only one that didn't die. Yeah. And so he encounters these women and there's terrible women characters in it, but there's amazing women characters in it. So there's like, just like guys, right? What I love about it, there's bad guy girls, but there's good. So he has these women that he meets along the way and they protect him. One is a special forces uh, Israeli uh, soldier. And she has to, her mission is to protect him and get him to this facility. And he has uh, his sister and it's just, but then there's other, uh, it's just so good, man. It's just such a good read. I could not, I can't recommend it enough. Then my last one. Now I've not read these. Here's my disclaimer. I've only read one or two. I want to read the series. Constantine. Oh Uh, yes. The 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 term is Hellblazer is the series, but it's Constantine. They made a movie with Keanu Reeves, by the way, he's making another one. He did sign on. He's making a part two. Uh, those were based on comic books. These are excellent reads. I've not read them all. They're on my back catalog. Uh, did you see the movie? Like, What were yes. your thoughts on it? Oh, I thought it was great. Uh, totally different kind of concept of this guy uh, fighting uh, evil and uh, it's like a detective. being contracted by fallen alien, uh, fallen a- angels. I there can't talk to <laughs> I was saying fallen aliens. I've been playing too much Hell Divers. But there you yeah, go. That's what it is. Um, a really good show. And Keanu Reeves, I mean, he does a great job in pretty much everything. And then Peter Stormar playing Lucifer played an amazing part. Yep, it's a great, great comic series. So I can't yep. recommend this one up. But I'm gonna, I'm gonna go back and read this one. So this is a mix of the ones that I've, I've read with recently, uh, and just th- they have a soft spot for me. And there's a billion more I could go on to, but this is th- these were the ones that I came up with that I was uh, super excited about. So that wraps up our conversation on that. Let's reflect just for a little bit about Comic Con coming up. That's why we had this whole comic conversation. What are you looking forward to most, Doug? Now that you know what to expect, you know how many people are there. You you know we're out of the pandemic. What are your What are you looking forward to? I think this year, really, um, and to kind of talk about last year, I had no idea what it was. I had no idea what I was going to see. I uh, really had some takeaways that I want to see this year, and that is costumes cosplay people uh just in their natural element you know i talk about uh nerds geeks you know when we very first started the show we kind of gave a definition of that i think comic-con and conventions like this 
let you be free and let you uh, do what you want to do and show the passions that you love. So the uh, costumes, cos- cosplay, all that is really good. And then the merch, you know, I, uh, you know, I settled with a wallet last year, like a ridge type wallet. Mm-hmm. Um, I definitely want to get something a little more hardcore game style wise, nerd wise. Uh, I've got a lot of space on this wall behind me. I think I need to fill it up a little bit. So that's a big thanks for me. Uh, maybe some t-shirts, uh, merch, merch and cosplay. That's what I'm really excited about. Uh, there's some celebrities uh, this year, and uh, we're going to talk all about this next week. But the list of the celebrities is amazing. I know they make lots of money. I know they need to be paid for their time here. I just don't want to spend any extra money to stand in line and get a photo with them. I, I'm not that hardcore, I guess. So, well, I, I'm very. I wouldn't mind. I wouldn't mind meeting any one of these. Typically, what absolutely, I'd, yeah. Like my daughter when she would go, Leah, she was all about the celebrities. The thing for me was if I find somebody that I absolutely have to meet, I will do it because you're wasting yep. your day. Essentially, you're going to stand in a very long line, depending on who mm-hmm. the person is. And you're, I, I met the Walking Dead people, for example, when I was there. Yeah, I did stay in line that it wasn't too long. So if there's somebody I will, you do have to pay. But I don't want to eat my day away because I love the merch. Yeah, I love walking around looking at all the wares. Uh, so what I typically do is we'll walk through the celebrity area just to say that I saw them in person. Yeah. But there are just so many celebrities that I wouldn't mind uh, meeting in, inside of here. Yeah. I remember looking last year and uh, I don't know if it was the same, but this year it looks like they've got them packed. I it mean, is. there are a ton of people this year. I think it's because the COVID stuff is kind of, you know, let, yeah. let's see there's I mean, John, John and the hits keep coming. Yeah. He, I love him. He was the Punisher, but he was on walking dead. He would be one that yep. I would probably like to meet. Yeah, he's he's pretty good. There's just so many of them. There's so many of them. I, but you're right. I think they're coming in. They're coming in hot with all these celebrities. And I think it's because the, the lull of large crowds and the fear of that mm-hmm. have kind of subsided. Yeah, and I definitely don't want to take away from the celebrity aspect, but uh, there's definitely stuff that I want to go see. My- uh, like I said, a uh, lot of long queue lines to get up to the front and talk to him. Yeah. My, I mean, for me personally, you know, I went crazy last year. I told Doug, I was like, there's this one vendor. Yeah. That they have these etched coffee mugs and every year I get them and they've been there every year. And when we stumbled upon them, I was like a kid in the candy shop. I, didn't I buy like, I think about like six or seven of them. There's insane. Absolutely. But no. I use them every day. I use them every day because you can put them in the yeah, dishwasher. That's what I was going to say. Oh my God. They're so good. And you saw some that yeah. you like. Uh, on there i did you know i uh recently became a co- i'm doing all kinds of things now look but, at it uh, he's broadening his horizons everybody coffee drinker so uh rookie still now so i need to get some new merch to uh drink out of and stuff <laughs> i've been looking uh D D. we haven't played very much but i really want some kind of viking D D mug to drink my ale and my uh they have brew them. out of they have them they have they're like horns they have yes. because Gabriel. How son, awesome would that be? He was looking at him. He's been looking at him for a while now. You can drink yeah. out of a horn nurse or even out of a, a stein with horns out of it. Very nice. The, you were talking about DMD. They have those towers that people sell. The roll drop, towers. Yeah. yeah. You drop your dice in it and it rolls out of like a castle and it rolls yeah. it for you. Stuff like that. I mean, dude. I think this will be better. I think I'm ready this year. I am you are ready, ready to go. I've got a new job. I'm walking my butt off. I'm yeah. just uh so I've yeah. got a lot more energy. Um yep. So it's gonna be a great year, I think, and we're gonna have a really good episode to bring you lots of photos, lots of thoughts and uh some merch, hopefully. Definitely. We will do a uh a, a, what's the term where you our pickups. We'll do a pickups video. Yeah. What we absolutely. picked up there. We what did that kind of last what year. What I got. Yeah. We kind of did that last year. I showed some of my things. I also got a Ridge Wallet. Mine was a Superman one, coincidentally. Yours was Fallout. Uh, yeah. Had the, power armor on it. When I saw it, I was like, oh, wow. I remember they had a Superman one. I was like, I got to get it. Oh, yeah. And absolutely. one of my all time uh, favorites. Cheap. Look at this. Great price. If you're on video, I'll just explain what it is. There is a, a vendor there that essentially their whole thing is they make items it's coffee cups t-shirts and they take your favorite characters and they they recreate them as cats amazing and what i'm holding up is my mouse pad hopefully my green screen but it's clark Kent, yep. superman but it's a cat 
dress that pins up. I, it's crazy things like that. So, but I like practical I like things it. that I'm going to use every day. And I have my my mug here. I got this at Comic Con last Very year. Nice. It's a Superman mug. So I love the cups. I like the practical things that you can use. I'm not really into the uh, decorations because I don't have a lot of space. But, but yeah. it's going to be fun. We're going to have a great time with it. I like it. All right, brother. I think that brings us home. Yeah. Wraps up our episode number seven. We want to thank you for joining us because we have a blast doing this. It's a fun show. Uh, it's, we get to talk about the really cool things, geek out and not just keep it to ourselves, but you know, share it. And we're really, really excited about what we're going to bring you next week. So it'll be a special episode and we want to wish you a happy week. Doug, bring us on home, my friend. Yeah. I want to thank everybody for listening. You know, we started this adventure about a year ago. Uh, for me, it's, uh, not really a show for you all. It's a learning lesson for me. I've gotten into so many cool things, you know, D and D comics, movies, conventions. I'm really enjoying it. And I hope you are too. We're going to bring you some really great stories. I've got some interviews lined up. I've been working kind of behind the scenes and, uh, sending out emails and texts and I'm not a tweeter, but I send out some Facebook messages. So keep listening and we'll bring some good content. Oh, wow. As always, uh, visit our store. Yep. It's getting a little warmer, but we got some t-shirts. We got those baseball shirts I keep talking about, coffee mugs and That's all right. kinds of stuff. Yeah, check it all out. Very well done. I want to give you, give you some applause. Good job. Hey, man. thanks. Excellent. Excellent job. Look at that. The guy's becoming a pro. If you look at episode hey, number I'm, one. I'm getting better all the time. Versus number two. He's just, he's nailing it. He's nailing it. Three, so. what? Three different cameras later, two mics later, and I'm sounding good. <laughs> oh, boy. Looking a lot of money, okay. A lot of money. <laughs> and uh, my knowledge base has grown uh, we, for we, the nerd world. We've all grown. So it's, it's pretty awesome, man. Well, everyone, thank you so much for joining us. Thank we you. hope you have an awesome week. We're looking forward to sharing uh, with you our experience next week. You take care and stay safe. See ya.